Hello and uh, welcome. We are going to see more problems on the t-test, t-test, chi-square test and two sample z and f test. Uh, in this case, I am not going to give you the problem itself directly and ask you for the test. A setting will be given and you have to sort of quickly figure out what test to use. It will be mostly clear but still what test to use. The actual samples will be given. You have to do the computation and come out with the final conclusion. Okay, so here is the one such uh, question here. Uh, someone uh, from somewhere claims that the average annual salary of an entry level data scientist is 8 lakhs per annum. Okay. You have a suspicion that this is too high, you actually think this should be actually lesser. So you start out to collect some data. Okay. You talk to 10 such people okay, and find that their annual salaries uh, is like this 6.9, 7.2 uh, like that. So let us go ahead and oops. What did I do here? So this is not what I want. Okay, so so you have 6.9, uh, 7.2, 8.7 like that, up to 7.4, and uh, based on the above, the question that is asked is, uh, what conclusion can you reach about your suspicion? So so these are the samples. So so your null hypothesis is that the mu is equal to eight, and alternative is you are suspecting this is uh, has to be lesser, so you are saying mu, mu less than 8. So your test is going to be uh, reject H0 if uh, x bar is less than c, right. So this is what you are going to do, you are accepting the alternative if the x bar is too low, okay. So notice here the, uh, the samples are given but the variance of the samples is not given, okay. So what you will be using is t-test. Isn't it? So the best way to do this x bar is uh, since we do not know the variance is to use the t test. Okay, So you are going to have alpha being probability that x bar is less than c given h0. So to use the z uh, t test you, you need the sample variance and the sample uh, mean I mean sample variance is at least something that you need. So let us go ahead and see how we can uh, quickly calculate that. So we need this data. So this should be easy enough. Okay. So let's go to our favorite page here. Then define x is np dot array. So this is a way to bring the value into uh, Python. Once you do this, I want uh, np dot variance of x comma. You can put ddof equals 1. So this will give you the correct uh, bias adjusted uh, variance. Let us see this 0 0.3982. So 0.398. So that is uh, so, so sample variance is uh, Zero point six three one. Okay, so that's something we have. Now, how do you go to the z test? Given h zero, I'm going to assume the average is eight, right? So probability of x bar minus eight by zero point six three one. Okay, divided by root ten. How many samples do I have? Uh, it's ten. Okay, this is great lesser than c minus eight by zero point six three one by root. Okay, is that all right? So that's the that's the deal with this. So you get uh, this to be the uh, this is the t distribution, right? So this is less than so it is directly the f t uh, nine, okay, of c minus eight by point six three one by root ten, okay. So this works out to c equals eight plus f plus 0 0.631 by root 10 times f t 9 inverse of alpha itself which is point, uh, we will take alpha to be 0 0.05. So this is an alpha that I fix, okay. This will work out to what? Let us see, let us see what this works out to. Maybe I should uh, print something here. So c works out to uh, 8 plus 0 0.631 d 
divided by square root of 10 multiplied by st dot t dot ppf of 0 0.05 comma 9 okay so that's the formula i hope so if you run this you're going to get 7.634 that's what you get here 7.634 at uh, significance level of 0 0.05 so let's now see what the what the average is so np dot i think there is something called average yeah average of x 7.86 so that's good so x uh, x bar since 7.86 is greater than 7.634 so remember you reject h naught if x bar is less than c it is greater so you end up accepting h naught okay so that's what you do so you you put your suspicion aside you think at least at 0 0.05 significance level i'm going to accept the null hypothesis with this data and go with uh, 8 lakhs per annum as the truth okay this is if you set it up hopefully you saw the way in which you did this if data is given you have to compute the sample standard deviation you have to compute the sample mean uh, and that also you can do in python quite easily of course in an exam you may have to do it by hand but we won't give you too complicated data for you to work with okay so that's problem one let's move on to problem two so here you have cooking gas cylinders uh, and somebody is reporting the standard deviation to be 500 grams and you think it's too low it should be actually higher okay so here uh, your null hypothesis is sigma equals 500 grams or let's say 500 and your alternative is actually sigma is greater than 500 okay so your test is going to be s squared reject h naught if s squared is greater than c so this is going to be your uh, uh, rejection and you also have data here so okay so now i have my data let's do uh, I'll call this x1 and p dot array of there you go. Uh, there were two fourteen point eight. Was that true? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, several fourteen point eights are there. Let me just make sure I got that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There you go. That's good. And then uh, I will definitely need the sample standard deviation, which is maybe np.sqrt of np.var of x1, comma ddof equals 1. There you go. Let's just print this. You're going to get 0.624. Okay. So the sample standard deviation equals, we just saw it, 0.624. And there are n equals 10 samples. Okay again the value of alpha is going to be probability of s squared being greater than c given h naught given that the sigma is uh, 500 so so once you do that you're going to have probability of n is 10 so 9 times s squared by uh, sigma is 500 so 500 is you know 0 0.5 squared so this is kilograms right so this is 0.5 uh, if, if I have to compare with 0 0.624, right, that's in kilograms, it's 624 uh, grams in some sense. So, point f I'll, I'll convert to kilograms, use uh, kilograms everywhere. So, maybe I should do that uh, right here, 0 0.5, it's better that way. Sigma is greater than 0 0.5. Okay, so we'll keep the units in kilograms. Uh, so, 9 S squared by 0.5 squared is greater than 9 C. 
okay, and normally I put c squared here, so let's just put c squared, pi 0.5 squared, and uh, this is chi squared 9, right? So this would be 1 minus f chi squared 9 of 9 c squared by 0.5 squared. So you can, you can do some simplification here if you like. Uh, from here you get, uh, you know, 9 c squared by 0.5 squared is actually f chi squared 9 inverse of 1 minus alpha. You can pick an alpha, this is 0 0.05 maybe you pick, so that implies c squared equals uh, 0.5 squared is 1 by 4, so it's 1 by 36, isn't it? See, so 0.5 squared is 1 by 4, so 4 multiplies 9, you get 36, c squared is 1 by 36, f chi squared 9 inverse of 0 0.95. So let's see what this will work out to. Okay, so 1 by 36 times uh, st dot chi squared dot ppf of 0 0.95 comma 9. Let's see what this is. This comes out 0.46997. So 0.47, that's what this works out to. So c equals the square root of this which will be, so I should take a square root of this. Point six eight five five. Okay, so the since the standard deviation point six two four is less than point six eight five five, you ended up accepting the null hypothesis. So, in spite of your suspicion that your standard deviation might be greater than half a kilo, the gas cylinders are good inside the quality of what the variability is expected to be. Okay, so once again, the same test as before, except that the language is different and you have to look at the data, compute its standard deviation, compute its mean if necessary and come to a conclusion. Okay, so that's the end of the one sample tests. In the next lecture, we will do uh, two problems in the two sample tests. Thank you.